Hey guys. All right, so the question on the table today is how in the world is linear algebra applicable to chemistry? All right, we're going to show a quick example how we can use it to balance chemical equations. So first things first, the basis for the reasoning why we even need to balance chemical equations. Remember, mass is never created and never destroyed, especially in any chemical reaction. So therefore, the total mass going into a reaction has to equal the total mass coming out. This condition is satisfied when each atom has the same number going into reaction that is produced after the reaction. So if we have two nitrogen atoms going into a chemical reaction, we have to have two nitrogen atoms produced from the equation. All right, so for example, let's look at this chemical reaction right here. We have some ammonia mixed with oxygen dioxide, and we know these things produce nitrogen oxide and water. So this looks like a good equation, but it's not complete because it's missing its proportionality coefficients. The way it looks now is not true. One molecule of ammonia and one molecule of oxygen dioxide does not produce one molecule of nitrogen oxide and one molecule of water. The proportionality is going to be a little bit different. So our variables here, x, y, z, and t, are going to be our proportionality coefficients. So in order for the equation to be truly balanced, the variables in front of each molecule must produce the same number of each atom before the reaction and after the reaction. So this condition is going to create for us a system of linear equations. So, for example, let's look at the coefficients of nitrogen on the left side of the reaction. X is the coefficient for nitrogen. So we know on the left side there is X number of atoms. So this has to equal the number of atoms on the right, which is Z. So X has to equal Z, and this gives us our first equation. For the second equation, let's look at the coefficients of hydrogen atoms. So on the left side, X times 3 gives us the number of atoms for the left side of the equation. And this has to equal the number on the right side, which is t times 2. 3x must equal 2t. All right? And for our third equation, let's look at the coefficients of oxygen. y times 2 gives us the number of atoms on the left. And this must equal z plus t. So there we go, we have three linear equations that we're going to use linear algebra to solve. All right, so we have our three equations, and to make them a little bit easier to deal with, we've turned them into homogeneous equations. Brings all the variables to the left side of the equation and sets them all equal to zero. And then we can put the set into a coefficient matrix. Coefficient matrix Gotcha. The coefficient matrix right here on the left column, the left row is the coefficients of the first equation. So we have 1x, 0 y's, negative 1z, and 0 t's. On the second equation, we have 3x, 0 y's, 0 z's, and negative 2 t's. The last row, we have 0 x's, 2 y's, negative 1 z's, and negative 1 t's. So with the coefficient matrix, we can plug it into the linear system in matrix form. ax equals b where a, x, z, and t are the variables we're going to solve for. All right, so 
We've taken our coefficient matrix and we've turned it into the augmented matrix. So this column right here is our B column. So from here, we can plug it into our calculator or row from alpha and put it in reduced row echelon form, which gives us this matrix right here. And from here, we find that X, Y, and Z are our leading variables, and T is the free variables. This gives us this set of four equations right here. As you can tell, x, y, and z are, are, are all proportional to the value of t. Meaning for any positive integer of t, this equation is true. Now for a final balanced equation, all variables need to be whole numbers. Therefore, the value of the free variable t is set to six, which produces the following values, where all the coefficients are whole numbers. And we have found our coefficients, and now we plug them into our chemical reaction. We have four ammonia molecules, five oxygen dioxide molecules, four nitrogen oxide molecules, and six water molecules. So using linear algebra and reduced row echelon form, we have solved for four variables and produced a balanced chemical equation. Yay! And this is a list of my references from people who are much smarter than me who provided lots of useful information.